Hi, welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 25. I was reading the Psy Electronics Design news group the other day, like I normally do, and uh, somebody posted a question. It's a classic question. It's been posted, you know, countless times before, and it's, it's uh, one you've probably come across in your studies. It's the infinite resistor problem. The infinite resistor problem is a classic uh, electronics puzzle given to, you know, students. I can remember doing it, you know, 20 odd years ago, solving the silly thing. And, and it's, it's still being asked. And basically what it is, if you haven't seen it, the infinite resistor problem is it's a grid of, of actual resistors and they're all one ohm. They're all the same value. Doesn't matter what the actual value is, but they normally put one ohm. They're all the same value, and basically uh, the classic question is to measure the what is the resistance across one of the resistors if there's a whole grid of resistors going off in infinite directions. And, well, the answer is um, half an ohm. Well, the answer is 0.5 times R if R, is a res if R is the value of the resistor. It's, you know, it's a classic answer to a classic problem and there's many you know numerical ways to solve it there's also um you know some you know rules of thumb ways to solve it as well but the one poster of the psi electronics group was not quite the classic one it was actually uh what is the value between not just across the one resistor but across diagonal points what's the resistance across diagonal points like this and uh, well, you know, there were many people, um, you know, uh, saying it's real difficult to solve, and, and yes, it is, you know, it's a, it, it can be quite difficult uh, if, you know, if you try and do the math for it. A lot of people have to write a program to solve it, you know, you can't really solve it intuitively all that well. It's, it's not as simple as the classic problem that's just across one resistor. And the answer actually um, uh, turns out, I, I believe, I haven't actually gone through the math um, actually done it myself, but um, it, it looks like the answer is um, uh, 2 on pi times r. So, you know, 0.636 times r. Every time the question comes up, people uh, argue about the mes best mathematical solution, the most elegant, you know, the simplest to understand, the best concept, and yada, yada, yada. And, well, you know, it, it it just gets a bit boring, you know. All these math solutions, you know. I'm not a I'm not a huge you know math fan. I don't I don't like all these numerical solutions to, to things. I'm more of a practical guy. I like it when you when people you know actually you know you can measure things and uh, you know practical stuff. So well, I went bugger it. I'm gonna build it. So here it is, the infinite <laughs> resistor network. Check it out. Isn't it cool? It's almost a work of art. So here it is, I actually went and built it. It's the infinite resistor network. Okay, granted it's not actually infinite in scope, but you know, um, anyone with any engineering, um, you know, nous at all can see that the problem is going to converge to a value. So, you know, it doesn't, so the, the uh, question actually being infinite is a bit of a red herring. It doesn't really matter. It's going to converge pretty quickly to a single value and you know so I couldn't obviously build an infinite one but I did have a box of 500 odd um, 500 odd 10k resistors so I thought I'd build this sucker and see what I got so this is actually a 14 by 14 grid um, it's got 420 resistors total so you know it, it's not a bad representation I thought you know you've probably at least got to go an order of magnitude um, you know, in size. So, you know, I figured, you know, 10 by 10 would probably do it. Um, it, it, it should easily do it, actually. Um, but, you know, I, this is all, all the resistors I could, I could scrounge together. So they're 10K, 1% resistors, um, very high quality ones. And um, so I lashed this together. It took me about like an hour to build this. So, you know, some people actually take longer to actually solve it on paper. So, you know, it can be quicker to actually build the thing than it can be to solve it if you're not very good at math and, you know, you get stuck and you're trying to solve the damn thing. So, let's have a look and see what we can measure. 
Right, so here it is. Let's try and do some measurements, shall we? Okay, I've got, um, let's do the standard uh, question, which is across a single resistor here. Okay, as you can see, it's um, it should be 0.5 times R, and R is 10K, so we should be getting 5K. And there you go, I get 5.034K. And if you put it across another one, there's going to be some differences there. There you go, 5.017, and you just move it around, 5.02... And that's all within uh, the tolerance you'd expect for such a grid. There you go, 5.029, etc., etc. Now, if you go um, further out on the grid, let's try that. 5.03, it's you know, it's pretty similar. So let's go out further. Let's go out somewhere else. Measure it again, and 5.05. So you start getting towards um, a non, uh, you know, it's once you get towards the edges, you don't get that ideal value. There you go, 5.134K. Okay, so let's try the big one, the uh, diagonally opposite um, points. And we should get um, 2 on pi, or in, you know, in the case of this grid with 10K resistors, 6.37K um, or thereabouts. Now, here, let's try it. 6.41. That's within uh, that's within our one percent tolerance. Let's try it again somewhere else. 6.41. It looks like we're getting you know fairly close, fairly consistent values in all directions. 6.42. They're all within one percent. Let's go elsewhere on the grid and try it. 6.42. So there you go. It's it's confirmed. It's um it looks like it's within. It is actually uh, 2 on pi. As you get towards the edge, you can see it go up. It's now out of tolerance, 6.71, because we don't have enough resistors in this direction here. So, um, you know, but pretty much if you get within, you know, um, three or four resistors outside the, well, uh, away from the edge, you get fairly close to your expected value. Right, okay, let's measure the other one now. The one with the um, second diagonal up, so it's actually one up and two across. Now this one should be um, uh, 7.732K, and it's not. It's actually 7.853, as you can see, and that's actually um, outside the 1% uh, um, spec which we were meeting well before. And if we move it around like this again, it's um it's going up a bit and if we keep going towards an edge there we go we're well outside of spec so this one it looks like uh the the further out you go um the further spread you do inside the grid the greater the um uh tolerance and the actual tolerance out on a on a fixed size grid so there you go so, as you can see, the results were rather interesting. Um, it actually uh, showed the limitations of this fixed um, size grid, or it, or it appears to when we had the single resistor, we were pretty close to spot on to what we actually expected. Once we went on the diagonal, we were a bit um, higher than what we actually expected, and then once we went um, up one and across two, um, we were even higher again, um, in theory, you know, outside of the spec and what we actually expected. So, there you go, the limitations of a fixed size grid. But it's still pretty cool. So, there you go, that was a whole bunch of fun. I love it when you can actually measure things, it's terrific, it's much better than just solving it on paper. This is what electronics is all about, practicality. I think I've really grown quite attached to this, it really is... Quite a work of art, I like it, I think I might actually frame it.